there to Zamboang, in the island far away, where the rustling of the palm trees and the moral maidens say, come you here to Zamboang and the shores of Zambo Bay. Here is life, also adventure. There are pearl beds neath the sea. And at times the moral raiders may on the warpath be, but it's not mundane existence, and it's strongly calling me. Take me there to Zamboang. It is there I want to be when the shadows of the sunset on the winters seem to me to be saying, off for Zambo and the placid Sulu Sea. Never has single nation defeated us. Paano pang yung solusyon na iwan yung ibang problema ro? Sounds close. The bigger the target, the greater will be the government's effort. Taking power, taking power. Remember this. You kufar. You kufar. Ang pamahalaang bulag at bingi. Wala kayong mapapala sa medalya at sweldo kung ang kapalit nito ay impyerno. On March 18, 1968, some 28 Moro recruits were taken by the armed forces of the Philippines to Corregidor Island for what they believed was another routine training. Upon reaching the island, each of them was shot and killed. The government and the armed forces of the Philippines tried to keep it a secret, but news of the incident will spread throughout the country. History will call it the Jabida Massacre. The incident successfully widens the gap between the Moros and the government and in turn leads to the formation of various Moro secessionist movements. It will be responsible for the formation of the Moro National Liberation Front. It will open up a centuries-long call for independence. It will tear Mindanao into pieces. southern regions of Mindanao lies a group of predominantly Muslim islands that stretches from the tip of the mainland all the way to the border of Saba. A scattering of islands that hold centuries of bloody history, home to kingdoms and sultanates, to pirates and warlords, to datus and princesses. These are the Moros. As known, the Islamic traders, missionaries, preachers, and so on, antedated the coming of the Spaniards around two or three hundred years. 
The term moro is a term that is identified with the generally Muslim populace in the Southern Philippines. More than two centuries before the coming of Spain, the Moros had already established a complex and modern civilization spanning the whole of Mindanao and reaching as far up north as Pampanga. So there was a substantial presence of Islamic communities from the south to the north. Most know of the Moros as a fierce battle-oriented people. And even though they had no shortage of warriors, the Moros were also excellent boat builders, a necessity since the Moros were mostly dependent on the ocean for their livelihood. Fishermen and pearl divers from all over southern Mindanao would come to large markets in places like Holosulu to trade and barter. Far from the centralized government of Luzon, these islands were ruled by Datus. They were people of great power and influence, and they ruled independent of each other. The Datus were also warriors themselves, and from time to time, disagreements that would lead to skirmishes between Datus and tribes would happen. But for the most part of history, the powerful Datus would enjoy a peaceful coexistence with each other. Their rule, however, would be challenged with the coming of colonizers. The Spaniards were able to identify practitioners of Islamic faith upon their arrival in the, in the 16th century. The arrival of the Spanish would contest the independence of native Philippine tribes, beginning with the fall of Raja Sulaiman in Manila at the hands of the Spanish the various Philippine tribal territories would one by one fall. It was in the Mindanao archipelago where the Spanish invasion would slow down due to the difficulty of terrain and its distance from either Cebu and Manila. When the Spanish fleet destroyed Brunei, then followed with the Sulu Sultanate, then the Maguindano Sultanate, and that practically signaled the beginning of what becomes the Moro-Hispanic War. Spanish missionaries would try to subdue the natives by converting them, but some tribes, like the Muslim Moros, would fiercely deny conversion. So the war lasted for many centuries. The Spanish would spend centuries of an easy relationship with the Moros, whom they would never be able to conquer. And then, on December 1898, U.S. President William McKinley declared the benevolent assimilation of the Philippines. It was part of their plan to rule the country. The Americans, led by General Otis, would swiftly take control of the country. When the Americans came, there was a total um, reverse from the supposed religious approach of the Spanish conquistadores from the Americans in terms of pacifying the Moros. While there were some initial resistance from the Moros, the Bates Treaty would calm the tension. The entry of the American forces was done through diplomacy in the beginning. This peace, however, was short-lived. The project of the Americans was really to um, integrate the Moros into the Philippine colonial system then it was easy later on for, for the Americans to launch the project of Filipinization. The resulting outbreak of war between the Americans and Moros would lead to one of the bloodiest battles in Philippine history. Later on, that pacification campaign resulted into the formations of a nascent, what I call Moro nationalism. There should supposedly be two governments, one in Mindanao and Sulu, and the other one in Visayas and Luzon. But obviously, the Filipino nationalists did not like the idea. The fighting would continue on until the major Moro forces yield. Dato Kiram of Sulu, arguably the most powerful and influential of the Datus, will submit to American rule. 
and even though there were still pockets of rebellion scattered throughout the Mindanao Islands, the Department of Mindanao and Sulu established by Americans will visually rule the region. The American flag would fly in Mindanao. After the events of World War II, the Philippines will finally gain its independence from American rule. But a new problem faces the Moros. On the blue-green China Sea, where modern ships and planes have shrunken the great spans of water in our changing world, lies the finest port of the Far East, Manila, Pearl of the Orient, a pearl floating on a string of more than 7,000 islands which form the Philippines. One of the main crossroads of the world for commerce and travel between East and West, and because of its strategic value, it was one of the most heavily bombed targets of World War II. The new Manila, being rebuilt today, more and more resembles an American city. People in Manila are much the same as people in any modern metropolis. But it will take a generation of hard work and national financing to repolish the war-rubbled Pearl of the Orient and restore these ruins to their pre-war magnificence. Manila, the once beautiful capital, which blended the will have homes again. Yes, Filipinos are many peoples with eight distinct languages and 87 dialects. But the stirring music of their national anthem is a symbol of their unity. Moro nationalism gains certain distinction until the launching of different rebellions, starting, for instance, from Kamlon Rebellion, then the attempt by Sultan Umbra of Sulu to secede from the Philippine Republic. Failing to establish their independence, the Moros suffered an uneasy coexistence with the government. All the while, a steady influx of migrants have started to move into Mindanao due to its abundance in natural resources. Moro ancestral domain would slowly fall into the hands of settlers and homesteaders, sparking animosity between them and the Filipinos but for the most part, they kept silent. That issue resurfaced, especially during the time of President Makapagal and eventually President Marcos. That led to what becomes as the Chapida Massacre. Nangyari nang hindi inasahan yung uh, 72 trainees na yun. They are being massacred by the military dito sa Corregidor. So luckily, mayroon survivor, isa lang in the name of uh, Arula, Received by a fisherman ng Cavite. So, nadala siya. During that time, si uh, Leta uh, Nino Aquino, isa siyang uh, member ng uh, batasan, parliamentary dito sa Kongreso. So, nadala siya kanya hanggang siyang nag, uh, ang nagpalabas dito sa Kongres. Siyang nagborgal ng uh, ano na yun, yung massacre na yun. The events at Corregidor Island allowed Moro separatist movements to gain traction and militarized groups like the Moro National Liberation Front would be born out of this incident. This was the trigger in the formation of Moro Fronts, particularly the Moro National Liberation Front. Because of the ano, yung slogan ni Missouri, Jihad, Kalima Jihad P. Sabinilla, na-convince niya yung mga prominent family roles. I mean, you know, ang sumama, dumami. This is also the first time, aside from uh, Islam, uh, sa organization, revolutionary organization, nagkaisa yung uh, lahat ng tribo ng Muslim sa Mindanao. As the call for self-determination of the Moros began traction, the government was forced to begin negotiations with the MNLF. The autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao was established to appease the MNLF's goal of independent governance. The province of ARMM, or ARM, originally consisted of Maguindanao, Lanao del Sur, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi. Through the years, Marawi and Basilan were also added. Nur Miswari would come to be the region's governor and by virtue of ARM's creation, 
the MNLF's request would be met at the same time an ideological rift was happening inside the organization. A new faction was formed, like the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. Then the so-called nationalist paradigm of the MNLF was uh, rivaled with the Islamic paradigm of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. With the continuing ideological rifts between Moro groups and the rampant factionalism, the journey for peace gets held back with each negotiation. Peace agreement signed between the government and the Moro fronts. There's always an underside to it. That is the formation of another front. But there was a brilliant episode in the Ramos presidency as an attempt to bring in the MILF into the negotiating table so that there will be a comprehensive negotiation. During the height of the war, then-President Ramos tried to sue for peace with the Moro groups, a startling departure from his military background. What the Ramos government had done was to sign a kind of an understanding between the government and the MILF of Masim Salaman in 1997. But the Ramos government had lost time. The succeeding administration, that is the Arab administration, suffers from an absence of a peace vision. So instead of pursuing the peace agenda of the Ramos government, it in fact scattered the peace dividend that was already put in place. The war between the government and the MILF would prove to be costly. The next president after Estrada should have to put together the pieces and start where President Ramos had stopped. Unfortunately, President Arroyo even divided further the Moro National Liberation Front. To say the least, the peace process during the Arroyo administration also failed. With each succeeding administration and their respective methods for pursuing peace, the entire debate keeps getting dragged on. While outside of these negotiations, conflict frequently refreshes anew, affecting more and more civilians. With rampant displacement since the late 60s, more and more Moro civilians have moved north of the country to thriving cities like Manila. Nagkalit-silit siyang buhay ng Muslim. May napunta sa Saba, sa Malaysia, may napunta sa Luzon, Visayas. And I myself, during that time, I was a elementary grade 6 ago. So, naalala ko na yun. Kung ano nangyari sa amin, civilians, sunog doon, patay sa kabila, left and right. Tumakbo kami uh, sa Zamboanga, yung damit lang sa katawan. With their new lives in the north, these morals are faced with adjusting to the new environment. But there is hope yet. Ang Muslim, uh, ang picture ng Muslim, if you are being guided by the Holy Quran, yung real success, ha? happiness, dito sa dunya, sa mundo, pati sa kabilang buhay, if you are guided by the Holy Quran, to practice, the, uh, to obey the, the divine order of Allah, and to practice the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, doon ka maging successful, pag guided ka rin doon. The road to peace has been long, and even after decades of negotiations, many are still left unsatisfied. Violence is still a regular occurrence in Mindanao, and more and more civilians are killed and forced to move. Innamal mu'minuna ikwaton, all mu'min are brothers. Diba? Dapat ganon. Naintindihan natin, wala nang tribo para mag... Magkuha natin ang tunay na kapayapaan, ang tunay na pagmamahalan dito sa Pilipinas. The moral story has been an enduring one. They were once proud datus and rulers, fishermen and businessmen, warriors and pirates. They are a storied people with fierce beliefs and traditions. But they are also a happy people, a people who know how to idle and relax. 
And though conflict and mismanagement has brought forth an innumerable amount of pain and blood, hope is never lost. The history of the Moro is a history of the Philippines. Alif Lam Ra Tilk Ayatul Kitab Al Mubin Inna Anzalnahu Quran Al Arabi Al Laalakum Taqilun Nahn Nqus Alayk Ahsan Al Qasas Bima Awhayna Ilayk Hada Al Quran Wa In وَإِن كُنْتَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ لَمِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ إِذْ قَالَ يُوسُفُ لِأَبِيهِ يَا أَبَتِ إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ عَشَرَ كَوْكَبًا إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ عَشَرَ كَوْكَبًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ رَأَيْتُهُمْ لِي سَاجِدِينَ قال يا بني لا تقصص رؤياك على إخوتك فيكيدوا لك كيدا إن الشيطان للإنسان عدو مبين وكذلك يجتبيك ربك ويعلمك من تأويل الأحاديث ويتم نعمته عليك وعلى